My name is Gary Gauger, and I developed the Resonance Isolation Mounting System, which is also known as the RIM system. One of the things that I find, have always found very interesting, and this happened ever since I got my very first drum set, when the drum was on the holder, it choked severely. When you took it off, it sounded great. The experiment that we do, uh, that we're going to show briefly here, uh, has to do with basically just looking at what happens to a shell when you have hardware fastened to it and that shell has to support the weight of that drum. What really got me into this uh, was a letter that I received from a gentleman just a few weeks ago. Now this person must have some physics background because uh, they use very specific formulas in being able to prove this theory. He said, I recently today acquired a gorgeous uh, custom kit with a 10, 12, 14, and 16 inch tom. All four of the drums are suspended using this company's mounting system. Just looking at the mounting system, some fairly high red flags are raised. The drum is held only by two bolts that go through the shell and attach to the receiver that accepts the rod. Each of these bolts is 0.600 inches in diameter. Now that equates to about 9 sixteenths of an inch or a little over 15 millimeters. He goes on to say, I did some quick back of the envelope calculations with the assumption that a tom was eight pounds, which is pretty good for a 12 inch tom. Uh, we use in our demonstration a 12 by eight inch tom and its exact weight is eight pounds. So when you get into 14, 15, and 16 inch drums, you're dealing with a lot heavier weights here. Uh, he says he found absolutely obscene forces accumulating at these two bolts. This is considering only the static load. And by that he means just the drum hanging in air. Nobody's playing on the drum, it's just hanging on its own weight. The impulse generated when the drum is struck is bound to create some astonishing torques and the reaction torque generated by this mount is acting only through the two small 9 16 inch bolts. Now when he's referring to torque, he's referring to the amount of pressure that is twisting on that shell. I built a small little um, test piece, a little test center, and we're going to hook a drum up to that and we're going to show you today the amount of tension or the pressure and stress that's on a shell when hardware is attached to the shell and the drum is left to hang on that hardware. Okay, this is a push-pull gauge. It measures in pounds and it, by pushing on this little foot down here, it will tell us how many pounds of pressure are being exerted on the gauge. And as you can see, the gauge, the little meter goes up. We can reset it by pushing that. And if we use it to pull, we can also use it and tell how many pounds of pressure we used on that to, to pull on it. And we're going to use this to test the amount of pressure that's being uh, pushed against that shell, the amount of force when that drum is hanging in midair and it's being played. Okay, now we have the gauge attached to the apparatus here, and I basically built a frame to hold the uh, gauge securely, and I'm going to bring it up, and we're going to fasten it in place so it's, it's stabilized and stationary, and this will then be stationary and stay in place so I can rotate the drum down and indicate how much pressure is on the drum shell. Okay, uh, we have the apparatus set up here and I've got a stick holding the drum here, but uh, what I'm going to do is take that away and that will allow the drum to rotate down and put pressure against the pressure gauge. Now the pressure gauge is zeroed out and it's ready to go. So I'm going to remove this and by the way, this drum is totally empty. We have a clear head on the drum so you can see in it. So there's no extraneous weight in here. This is strictly the weight of an eight pound drum on this pressure gauge. So I'm taking the stick away and as I rotate it, it is going to put pressure on the shell. Let's see what it comes out to. Okay, uh, that drum is now in the plane position and as you can see, it's about 46, 47 pounds of pressure is now pushing on this shell directly through the hardware that's mounted to the shell. So that tells you 
how much pressure is being placed against a thin shell. This shell is about a little less than 3 16 of an inch thick. One thing that I wanted to add, uh, if anybody wants to calculate how much pressure is on their shell, the general rule of thumb that we have found is if it's a 12 inch drum, take half of the diameter, that's six inches. The weight of this drum is eight pounds. So multiply half of the diameter times the weight and you will pretty much calculate how much pressure is on that shell. So what we've come out with is six times eight, which is roughly about 48 pounds of pressure. It reads just about 47. Now the other thing to remember is when you begin to strike that drum, you're also adding another five to eight pounds of pressure. So if I started to play this drum, the gauge would probably go over its limit and it could break the gauge. So what I'm here mainly to do is to show you the amount of pressure that is being exerted on that shell when it's being held in a plain position. Well, I think the shell pressure test is very conclusive in showing the possibility of having damage to the shell or warping the shell from the severe stress that's uh, applied to the shell when the drum is forced to hold, be held by the hardware that's mounted to the shell. So this is a question that's been answered for me and I hope for a lot of other drummers uh, because over the years drummers would ask me, uh, do you think there's been any damage to the shell because the drums don't sound as good as they used to when I first got them? It's a possibility that you have to think about and it's a good reason not to put any pressure on the shell of that drum.